Hi there everyone, this is Mailman Zero, bringing you another NES classic. Today we're playing Blaster Master. So this is one of the best stories in all of video game history. This story incidentally was made up to suit an American audience, the original Japanese game. Uh, actually took place in the future time in a, I don't know, maybe a parallel universe. Anyway, at the time, it was thought that uh, American audiences would not appreciate the anime style or whatever. Anyway, it was a very Japanese game. So, the American version, they just tacked on this thing that makes absolutely no sense, where this guy goes underground and finds uh, this and just decides, oh, I'll just put it on and, and on, uh, I'll get in this tank and, and we'll go around. So, anyway, the, the uh, point of this game, apparently from the American version, is to die repeatedly because I'm not very good, uh, is to rescue your frog, I guess. I don't know to what lengths you would go to rescue a pet frog, but uh, as you can see, um, I am a tank. I'm actually a person in a tank. And I can shoot up, and I can shoot straight to the side, and I can have this guy jump on me a lot. And, um, yeah, this is a game where, where basically you, you uh, gain new abilities by finding parts. Uh, it's kind of like Metroid in that way, except for instead of upgrading your suits uh, and weapons on your suits, you're upgrading your tank's weapons trying not to die in the process, and failing miserably, and experiencing slowdown. So, one of the interesting aspects of this game is that it has uh, multiple areas here, so if I hit the select button, I can actually jump out of my guy, of my uh, tank, and walk around. Now, outside of my tank, I am an incredibly wimpy guy. Like, that guy would just kill me. I have to be careful not to jump from too high a uh, height or else I'll die, or at least lose some energy. I have a wimpy little thing to shoot. Now here, when I go in, in these, uh, I get this totally different view, which uh, at the time was really cool to be able to switch between these two. And in here, uh, basically, the, the point is to, to level up your guy. Um, see the gun indicated over here? You can find little things on the ground that will uh, make your gun power better. See, right now I can't even shoot more than you know, a quarter of the way across the screen, which makes it rather difficult to get this guy without getting hit. How many hits does this guy take? I figured if I said that he would die immediately. So uh, a lot of times power-ups are hidden in these blocks. I'm, I'm sure there's got to be something good in here, right? Because there's someone guarding it. Okay, so that's something. So those are those are actually power-ups for my tank. That gun, on the one on the right, made my gun power go up. And you can see, now I can shoot all the way across the screen. Whereas before I could only shoot a, a part way across the screen. If you get hit, you lose uh, that gun power. Uh, like if I were to walk over onto those spikes, I would uh, I would lose energy, which is indicated by POW, but I would also lose some of my gun power. And this guy's here. I forgot he was here. I can't believe I lived through that. Okay, that was an ambush, and we didn't die. So now let's go up the really slow ladder. get back in here, where it's safe. Notice that we have separate power meters for ourselves and for the tank. Now here's where you fall down and try not to die, and especially try not to fall in the water. I'm not going to go in there because I don't think it's important. Okay, I don't want to fall into the water. That's exactly what I was trying to avoid. It's not that big a deal, it's just as slow, that's all. 
so uh, I can swim into the water, so I'll get out of here. And as a, an individual, I'm, I'm much more maneuverable than the tank underwater. I don't know why I got that. No need to, I have full health right now. Full power. I can't remember if I'm supposed to go left or right here. I'm sure we'll find out. Oh, not full anymore. Figured that wouldn't last forever. Not a problem though, they're very generous. So, let's see what's in here. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to play in this game, because right now I'm just demonstrating. But, uh, notice also that I'm right-handed, so I can't hit that guy, because my gun is on the wrong side. Which is really annoying. That was not cool. And I lost my gun. That flashing one will restore, I believe, all of my pow health. Oh, this place. Yeah, this doesn't do anything. There there might be stuff hidden in here, but yeah. This is a red herring. I will try to find the boss of the first level, and I will play at least until then, or until I die. The early game here isn't terribly difficult, so hopefully the dying part won't be an issue. Even though my whippy little gun makes me almost impossible to kill guys. Quickly. So to swim, you just press the up button and he goes up. Swimming is a lot faster than trying to walk on the ground. Oh, there's nothing here at all. Why did I even come here? Obviously, it's been a while since I played this. Oh, what? Okay. Get back in here. It's over on this side, I think. Wait, I want that. And I almost didn't even get it. I love how it's just one shot from this and those guys are done. Okay, so there's gotta be something good here. Metroid guys, get out of my way. Alright. See, I could take this, I could climb this all the way up, but it would take forever because he's such a slow climber. So you get up here, press the jump button, and you're good to go. I keep wanting to press up to go indoors, which is a standard in most other games, but in this game you press down to go indoors. So you have to bait these guys to get them to come across so I can hit them. Oh, I, I should point out, you also have these bombs things, which are kind of like grenades, maybe. Not really sure if I can pause it. No, I can't really pause it while one's going. No thing. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, you have unlimited of those, and they don't really level up, as far as I know. Um, there's no power-up that you can get to make your grenades any better. But they, they do deliver multiple hits uh, when they explode, so gun is not very strong, it's worthwhile to use grenades sometimes. But they're very short range, so you have to be right on top of the guy before they're worthwhile. I can't remember if any of these have anything in them, so may as well hit all of them. Oh, and if you collect the power-up, then, um, then it's gone. But I think if you don't collect it, I think it'll still be there when you go back in the room. So like, if I don't get those, then I think that I can get them later. I could be wrong on that. Like most things, I could be wrong. Look at that. They put one behind there. You basically have to kill yourself or lose one bar of life to uh, get that. It's kind of silly. See, now these guys... ...is an example of when you'd want to do that. So there you go. I think this might be a boss. Nope, not quite, but these guys, if you don't use those, they take so many hits, it's ridiculous. I'm <laughs> concentrating carefully to avoid hitting these spikes. Alright, I think this is the first boss. Yes. So let's... 
hope we don't mess this up, but I think that only the grenades hurt this guy, so you have to... So, as you can see, he's flashing, and when he's flashing, that means he's getting hurt. These brain things are gonna hurt, start hurting me, so I better get out of the way. And there we go. First boss, not too difficult. So this, we pick up an upgrade for our tank. And it teleports you back to the entrance, which is nice. Jump back off of this and push down to go down really fast. So we'll get back in our tank and see what we got. Shot change? I think the shot's bigger now. Yeah, I'm not quite sure on this. If we press start, what do we see? Uh, hyper, hyper, hyper. I think that gave us like some better shots, I don't remember. Notice also that the name of our tank is Sophia the Third. That actually meant something. Whoa, look at that guy glitching out. That actually meant something in the original game, in Japan. Obviously here it doesn't mean anything, because it's just a tank. So, I think... Can we hurt this guy now, or no? Yes! So, before you couldn't hurt that guy. So it gives us access, by beating the first boss, we now have access to this area. We press down, and we go into area two. And, uh, so that's my intro to Blaster Master. It continues on in roughly the same fashion. Um, much like Metroid, there's backtracking involved when you get new abilities. You can come back to areas that you've been in before. areas through the, the old areas because uh, you have a new ability or a new weapon. And uh, it's a little bit like a maze as well. There are lots of ways to get lost in this game. And uh, if you haven't played this, then you should. I guess I should stop saying that because it's pretty obvious if, this is an N if I'm calling this an NES classic, then I think it's a good game and I would recommend it haven't played this before, so uh, it does take some patience and it does take some getting used to, um, because there's a lot of exploration involved. Um, yeah, I, I'll keep playing this for a little bit here. Um, I guess maybe I can show you what happens when you die, since I didn't do that. It's pretty exciting. But we'll find an interesting place to die here. I wanted to show you these lava pools because they're ridiculous. When you fall into them, you know, your, your car or your automobile or whatever. Why did I even get that? I'm trying to die. When you fall in, um, you, you have limited mobility, just like when you fall in water. So it's almost like you're in soup. You fall slowly and you lose a lot of life and then you explode. And then you have one left. Also known as left one. Anyhow. This is Mailman Zero. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy playing some Blaster Master of your own. Bye.